So G Skill, my goodness, they do some pretty innovative things when it comes to memory, right? Both in terms of technology, speed, and of course, design. And also huge thanks to our sponsors for making this trip possible, Fantex, Cooler Master, Thermaltik, and MSI. So this is the new Trident Z 5 series. We have the RGB in gold and silver. Looks absolutely stunning. We have the Trident Z neon RGB, so the black and white type of aesthetic with those neon RGBs going through the, the memory module. We have the Royal, which is the Royal. So it's the Royal Silver and Gold. Again, beautiful color scheme and these little crystals on top that, of course, illuminate. And it's a really interesting way to make the memory like the center of attention. So imagine just having four sticks of memory that is the illuminating component inside your motherboard and turn off everything else. I, fi I find that to be a very really cool way to showcase some of your components. And we also have the Royal Elite. So it has the same crystallite uh, RGB crystals on top, gold and silver color accents, and a little bit of that texture for diamond or, or something. And man, whatever they're doing here in terms of trying to redesign what the memory module looks like inside your PC, not your traditional black and white stuff, but really incorporating some luxury elements. And I find that silver especially looks really good on black motherboards. Gold looks really good with white and you can intermix and make your system look a little bit more luxury than it does. And speaking of crystallite, so they're introducing their new AO CPU cooler with crystallite elements on the pump illumination. And it's a really cool like this dual tone uh, structure. So it's got this solid at the bottom. We have the crystallite crystals on top and this little sort of a plate at the, at the top to give you very interesting visual from the angle because you don't notice the sides because they're transparent and they kind of disappear. And all you notice is the crystals and the little plate above it. So it's kind of this floating design. The fans also follow a similar structure uh, form factor of like the crystals on the fan frame. And the fan frame is slightly translucent so you can see through. RGB adds to the whole aesthetic. Combine this with some, some of the new memory modules. Maybe the, the, the silver ones would look really cool with the black model. And you have yourself, <laughs> I mean, uh, probably not something that I would do normally, but if you try to mix a match for something that is a little bit more unique, the new Crystallite AO cooler, it will also be sold as a separate uh, fans. So you, the fans are not just exclusive to the AO. It will connect to your motherboard, so uh, three pin, five volt RGB uh, illumination. So no need to worry about software directly for this AO cooler. Just plug into your motherboard and go. And we also have the white model. Now the white model would look absolutely stunning in the white enclosure. The fans look totally different versus the black one. I do prefer the black one, but still we have the translucent crystallite fan frame that you can see through. And it is a smooth interior for best airflow. The pump illumination still looks uh, quite unique, you know, flexible tubes and everything. So the AIO from G-Skill, that's uh, something that I was not expected to see uh, for them to launch, but it makes sense because everything that, to complement those beautiful memory modules, and I'm on board with. This is the Widgy Dash. So right now it's still, uh, you know, not fully complete. It's a little bit in, in prototype stages in terms of the software, but the Widget Dash is all about giving you this seven inches of space, uh, not super high resolution, but just enough touch screen with a grid size of five by four, allowing you to insert all types of uh, widgets and little information on screen. So the interesting thing about this product is it started uh, from the necessity for overclockers to have some system information on screen about what they're doing so that this can be somewhere on the table. It's just a USB-C connection at the back. It's not super uh, high refresh rate and it's not super high bandwidth, but USB-C nonetheless. And so this will display your system information in terms of temperature, in terms of clock speeds and everything. And eventually it kind of merged into this other thing that might be competing with uh, the likes of the Stream Deck, might be competing with the likes of whatever Razer is launching and that the entire master hub that Cooler Master is developing. And I feel like the, the Widget Dash has its place in the market because it's not that super intense things. You can do a thousand types of applications and everything on it. Imagine this as like your digital macro pad and widgets. So it does not pass a video signal. You cannot run any videos. 
you will be able to play some like a photo stream, you know, do a little album library through it. But for right now, we can, let's say, adjust the, the, the brightness of the screen. We can go into our Spotify menu. We can enter our playlist and just kind of go there and select some music and then go, go back. Some volume adjustments here. So as you can see, design-wise, it, it has some, something to be desired, but they tell us that they have some limitations on how big this widget can become. And this isn't a Windows widget. It's like something that's built into uh, the widget dash. There is no processing on this unit. This is just a pass-through. Everything is done on the computer itself. And in terms of CPU usage utilization, we are hoping under uh, 5%. Right now, it's about 20. <laughs> but uh, the end product will be around 5. I don't really want to photobomb this, but it's a very cool opportunity to for some spontaneous action at Computex, you know? So that was an unexpected but a very pleasant surprise. So back to the widget dash. Uh, what I want to say is that right now the software element, you know, it's as complete as, as they have made it, but they still want to focus a lot more on making sure the user experience from like reconfiguring the, the grid, for example, with all different dashes will become as simple as possible. And they know they are competing against what Elgato is doing, what Synapse is doing in terms of having this uh, familiarity with the software. And so when it comes to choosing what the widgets do, for example, right now, it's a little bit on the rough, but I can see myself using something like this to display some information, for example, when we're doing airflow testing. So you don't have to interact with the screen and everything can be uh, shown on the widget dash and this display. And going to the roots of this product, hardware info, <laughs> to display all your system information. Clicking it once reveals the chart instead of just the values in case you're interested of doing that stuff. I would love to see and being able to, let's say, you know, long press this to expand the entire thing to maybe just display one uh, a very important item for, for me personally, if I'm looking at something like this. But right now, everything is just everywhere. You can change the colors. So as you can see, everything is a little bit different. Uh, but going back to the home screen, what I would love for, for the widget dash to look is to have some consistency in terms of font, in terms of design. Like for example, if you look at over here, so the marketing material here, everything feels like it's part of the same ecosystem in terms of icons, in terms of like replacing a macro, in terms of uh, recording some sort of scripts and being able to run it on here. That is going to be possible. And so the widget dash, uh, this command panel has potential. And uh, I really hope that G-Skill delivers on something that is uh, you know, very outside uh, much of their domain. But if they do memory right, I hope they do this right as well. Now, normally only the clock speeds for the CPU and the GPU excite me. But what they're actually showing here is a working prototype of 48 gigabytes running at almost 9 gigahertz <laughs> on the memory, 8,800 megahertz. And you can see it here in our task manager. So this is a really cool showcase of what is possible right now for G-Skill, but most platforms don't even support it yet. So this is going to be coming later. And you might be thinking like, why is memory speed that, um, that high important? And because you'll have to choose between lower latency or the, the highest uh, hertz possible. And uh, I mean, that's a question for maybe another video, but whenever I'm editing all my memory is maxed out already and being able to have such high bandwidth, I mean, I'm editing at 3,200 megahertz right now. Are you kidding? Robert, it's too, it's too high. Overclocking with G-Scale is always a scale. So these massive nitrogen tanks are cooling this pyramid. We have a CPU running at 7,000 megahertz. Seven gigahertz is absolutely insane. And the memory is running at 10,000 megahertz. <laughs> That's very difficult to achieve on a standalone memory controller, but then you would do that with the CPU at that high speed. I think the temperature in here is like minus 53 in there. Everything is a little cool. It's a little intimidating to stand by, but uh, just shows you what type of crazy overclocking is being done here, and I'm all for it. Everything here looks absolutely ridiculous, but like in a good way, just to show you what uh, thinking outside the box for PC building looks like, and combining with some uh, G-Skill memory that for some reason, fits in perfectly well with most of these, regardless of how bizarre the case and the rest of the system looks like. So I'm Dimitri. Thanks so much for watching. I'll tell you the video today. And I'll, uh, what am I supposed to say? I'll talk to you in the next video.